it is the thing from American. Ah, that's nice. Sometimes it's good to know, man. Some of the uh, things that uh, Americans made. <laughs> All right, I think this is gonna be strats. I just hope this works. Oh, we gotta release the crew member. Ah, oh, feels bad. You were stuck inside. Yeah, Frank's hot sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like that's an American thing, man. My dad grew habaneros in the garden once, one year, and they weren't that hot. I hear they get hotter if you grow them a few years in a row. Ah, I'm not sure about the spice and the, how that grows work. But I could see that making sense. There's a video on Hot Ones where they eat the Carolina Reaper with Chili Klaus, and the pain is so real. Did you see the one where they made it, uh, the entire, what is it, the choir? It's like kids. They they were playing instruments, and they were all asked to eat a chili pepper, and then he would conduct the orchestra. There's also the one I saw where Sean from Hot Ones and Chili Klaus both eat the Carolina Reaper while riding on a carriage. <laughs> I saw a couple of those videos, man. I've seen those. I've seen those. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. They have done it twice. Oh my god, dude. I'm not gonna lie, man. It's mad funny sometimes. But I don't think I would ever eat one of those chili peppers. Like, mm -mm, man, it's a bad time. Why would you sign up for a second time for the YouTube content? <laughs> that, that, that's literally what it is. They're doing it for YouTube clout, dude. You know that guy, Chili Klaus? He eats Carolina Reapers, man. More than once. <laughs> oh, man. Does, does, can your body... Like your organs take damage from like processing hot chili peppers like that? Like is that a thing? Is that potentially a thing or is that not a thing? Because I'm curious man, that stuff's kind of crazy. Oh, he needs O2 again? Ah, oh, come on, spell more. Have you seen the chili farmer who invented chili axe? I have not. He can get ulcers. What what organ is that? What organ is that that you get ulcers, man? That sounds crazy. He eats chili peppers like candy. Ooh, that sounds that sounds scary. What's going on, Ace Billa Boy Hero? How are you? We're attempting to beat the game, so to speak. Not really. But uh, we're sending it up so that we could get started to beating the game. But how are you doing today, Ace Billa Boy? Hope you're doing well. Sending up our uh, research reactor for the Rad Bull Tear Opener. It's the stomach or intestines, okay. Interesting, interesting. Ah, there's a little bit of CO2 here. I think I could break that open. Yeah. All right, so the strategy we're going to be doing is we're going to be running the pipe right here through a vacuum. The vacuum is going to make it so that it doesn't freeze in the pipes. And I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. I forgot about uh, considering that. Which might mean that we're going to want to insulate a tile right here. So that it stops the heat transfer. I'm good, thank you. How are you? We're having a uh, warm day today. It's not that bad, but uh, just hope it doesn't get any hotter. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, praying for winter to come a little early. Ed Curry, he invented Chili Pepper X, hotter than the Carolina Reaper. Dude, 
I'm all for that, you know? Like, doing things like, uh, you know, growing chili peppers and stuff. And I think that that's cool. But I'm not gonna lie. When people start chemically making hot sauces that don't need, like, they're just adding chemicals to a hot sauce instead of actually growing a chili pepper, man. I feel like that's cheating. Because they, they have, like, chemicals that just make it so that it just is a lot hotter. And they synthesize it instead of growing it naturally. I feel like that's kind of disingenuous. Y'all feel me when I say that? I'm not a fan of that stuff, man. Growing chili peppers, I feel like it's cool. But when they start doing stuff like that, I'm just like, mm, I don't know, man. They're increasing the Skullville too high. Somehow Mother Nature keeps up that. It's been nice here. Not hot, but uh, just right. I see what with Ace Villa Boy. Not jealous. Totally am. <laughs> That's the reason why I use my chilies fresh. Dude, man. I've always wanted to make, uh, like, getting dried chilies, boiling it, and then taking that and making a sauce with it. I've seen that on so many shows and cooking videos. That's like, I, I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> it's like, man. Like, I just need to buy some dried chilies, keep it in the house. So that when, anytime I want to make something, I just make that, blend it, and I, I get a sauce. And it always looks so good when you watch the videos do it. I have one chili growing. It was some yellow chili. Yellow chili. Yellow chili. I don't know any notable yellow chilies. Alright, looks like Cyberdyne needs to go back inside. We'll put both of them in. Why not? This guy is getting rad sickness right now. Alright, so this is 54 and 50. We could take this. Cyberdyne. We still have a couple suits in here with max oxygen, so we're still pretty good. Have you guys ever chopped chili or handled chili peppers and then touch a part of your body that you weren't supposed to? I'm not gonna lie, man. I've never done that. But I've made freshly made stuffed jalapeno peppers with my bare hands, like a dumbass. I forgot to wear the food grade gloves and man, my hands were hurting. Like I didn't believe it. My hands were actually burning. I was like, fuck, what's wrong with my hands? They're really warm for some reason. Like what, what is this? And then I read online, I was like, oh yeah. You gotta wear gloves when you're handling chilies. I was like, what? You gotta soak your hands in milk if that happens? Hold up. I thought you'd drink the milk. I mean, that's if you consume it, right? Does that actually work? I don't want to waste milk, man. What if I'm lactose? <laughs> Do I start getting diarrhea from that if I'm lactose? You don't even have to touch anything either. The vapor could get you as well. Oh, man. Chili vapor? I gotta start worrying about that, man. That sounds dangerous. Long time no ZSU over there. Hope you're having a uh, good sleep. It's called Lemon Drop Pepper. It's yellow one. Oh! Is it... Uh... Is it like a banana pepper? That makes me remind me of that. The banana peppers. You could also use butter or oil. It's the proteins that cause the burning sensation. Oh, oils work. Wait, does that mean soap works? Because because soap is, is from fat, right? If you cut a pepper and a vapor gets in your eye, it would burn. Ooh, that sounds... That sounds like a biological weapon at that point. <laughs> Throw a bunch of peppers. Don't they do that in India? 
does does anyone know about that? I, I I read something in India that they will tie chili peppers across the line of a fence, and it will actually stop elephants from crossing because the smell of the chili pepper is so strong it scares the elephants. So people actually like put those along the fences to you know create a perimeter. I've heard about that, and it sounds insane. Like, the elephants are like, yo, man, yo, fuck the chili peppers. <laughs> I suppose if you had some real soap, but most soap, it's not the uh, real soap. That's true. I use liquid soap. And, yeah, that's far from the original stuff. That is true. FRD Dot. Have you seen it in action, man? Dude, that stuff sounds crazy. I already know some of the Indian curries you have, man. They don't mess around with the spice. They don't mess around with the spice, man. Fun fact, birds do not have taste buds for capsaicin. So they are one of the primary distributors of chili seeds. Oh, that's cool. Wait a second. If they can't taste capsaicin, they don't burn. Doesn't that mean they could tech? Wait, 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 wait. So, do you have to be able to eat that in order to be affected by it? So, let's say that us humans get ulcers, right? Wouldn't birds get ulcers from eating it? Right? They're a lot smaller than we are. It just, it just feels weird, you know? Wouldn't they have something similar? Because it's like, even if you can't taste it, you, you kind of have to metabolize and process it properly. Otherwise, you, we kind of just get to the same results, right? It's kind of like how uh, certain uh, animals that eat bugs, they could uh, process some of the parts of the animal or insect that otherwise is poisonous to us because they have a certain gland. That's a thing, right? I remember reading about that. I just didn't know any like specifics I could actually point to. But I remember seeing something like that. And it's because they, they have a certain part of their body. They could do X, Y, and Z that we can. I feel like birds would get ulcers, man. Is that why birds poop all over the city? They, they, they get into a bag of hot Cheetos and start just pooping all over the cars because they can't handle it. But they can't taste it. So it just tastes like Cheetos to them. Mammals are the only ones that could taste it isn't uh i read something that said that humans and i think it's the oh i forgot there is another mammal that enjoys spicy food and the only other mammal that does is us humans i forget what what animal that was man it feels bad i think it was like a like a groundhog or something some, does someone know what I'm talking about? There's one other animal that enjoys eating spicy food. Like, they have a little bit, they're like, oh, that's, that's, that's the stuff. <laughs> Alright, we need that one piece right there. And we need coal. Okay. So, checklist. We need to find enriched uranium. We need to get coal. And then... I think we're done. We have the water here. We have two full liquid reservoirs. And we could have more in here as well, if needed. The moment we bring in the enriched uranium, it's going to be good. And then... That's it, right? We should be about ready to head out. I guess we could also fill this up with a little bit more oxygen so that the uh, rad bolt generators don't overheat, but I don't think it's going to matter. It's, it's minus 30, right? As long as there's a gas, I think it's going to be fine. All right, so we got to build this. Ryan, Kyle, how you doing? Hopefully you're having a good Tuesdays today. Hope all is good in your part of the world. Ah, oh, come on. They're running into oxygen issues. 
All right, so Cyberdyne unequipped. This is at 50 kilograms. We'll give you a new suit. All right, so the suit docks are empty. A lot of worn out suits. And then we have a full suit right there. I need to make sure this is a vacuum so there's no heat transfer. So that the water stays at the temperature it needs to be. Outside of that, we're waiting for this water right here. It's I, Hopefully it's not going to freeze. But we need to get the uh, megawatt wire right here. Heavy watt wire actually connected. And then once we get done with that, we can head back home. Uh, while we wait for that, let's actually set up the other rockets that we're going to be sending. So get rid of this. We'll keep the battery module, even though we don't need it. You know what? Since we don't need it, I should deconstruct it as well. And I do need to send in some uranium. I could uncheck the uranium from the box so that they have an easy time just grabbing it. So that's going to be the plan, probably. And then we'll charge this up with some red bolts. All right, no power, but it's connected. And we could connect that. All we need to do... Oh, the smart battery isn't connected. Oh, I am Pepega. Okay. Automation is good. It is. And then it goes to the auto sweeper. Yep. All right. We're almost ready. A couple more pieces there. Oh, and, oh, this guy. Nice. Uh, we're no longer going to need the telescope. So I could deconstruct this. I need to set my bins up so that we could bring the items we need to bring. You guys are not trapped, man. It's an oxygen thing. Oh, they're, they're done? Okay, nice. So, stay inside. No more idling outside and getting radiation sickness. No more of that shenanigans. And then, yep, we're going to be ready. So, these guys, we're going to send back. We got to send them back home. Uh, double crew, nice. And let's go. So, we're ready here. We just need to bring coal and rich uranium, in which we'll set up right now. Okay. That's going to be two bins. And then I might as well get rid of that power line. We have water for the bathrooms. Pedestal, we don't need that. Two beds, that's nice. And of course, our uh, room bonuses. Not bad, not bad. I believe on the rail line, we have a lot of uranium. We do. Okay, so we're good. We just need to charge up our rockets right now. All right, so 500 kilograms of enriched uranium should be all we need. And then I will bring 10,000 kilograms of coal. Actually, how much do I have? I want to see relative to my actual uh, amount. Dude, I have 200 tons? Dude, I'm maxing that out. All right, hit that to max value. All right, so we're charging this rocket for no reason. We're going to slide this down. 1794. So it's going to go through this. Oh, stop getting hit. We need to charge the rockets, boys. And then oh, everyone's just getting hit. Oh, everyone's just getting hit right now, dude. All right, so we're going to unclick that. The uranium's on the ground, so hopefully they'll start grabbing this and storing it into the rocket. We'll charge up the engine so that we should be okay. And then after that, we should be good. Alright, so we lifted off. Oh, we melted one rocket. I mean, one ladder. So we need to remember to bring some raw minerals with us. So let's bring in... Let's bring in some igneous. That's that's what we have the most of. We're bringing 5,000. This is not sweep only. Nice. All right, cool. We'll be waiting for that. New printables. Got some gold amalgam again. That's always nice.
All right, all right. Not bad, not bad. Gonna be beating the game soon, boys. Y'all know what it is. All right, waiting for the rocket engine to charge. How much uranium do we need still? This is actually about to run out. Let's send in five kilograms more. Do you move into a new planet? Uh, move into a new planet? You mean starting a new playthrough, Ace Battle Boy? We're going to be doing the flipped asteroid. I don't know if we'll do it today, though. I don't know if I want to start today. But right now, we're setting up the reactor on another asteroid. That's, that's all we're trying to do right now. Move into a uh, new asteroid? I'm actually not. But we might be finishing up this playthrough. Can we not reach this? One, two, three. One, two, three. No, we're, we could reach that. And this is almost finished charging. Not bad. So we could already fly there because the rocket platform is empty. I just need to fill up my uh, items a little bit faster. I'm not sure what you was doing. Also, oh, the ice asteroid right here, right? Is the asteroid that has something called a temporal tear opener. The temporal tear opener has to be charged with rad bolts. And the rad bolt comes from the rad bolt generators. That's going to be how we're going to get research reactors. And the research reactors needs to have water piped in, which we have stockpiled on these reservoirs. And not only that, they are also going to be how we're going to manage the area. Basically, we're going to uh, use that to hopefully allow more oxygen to flow up to the top, but it should be fine either way. The CO2 should be fine. Today I learned that going through the temporal tear leaves rocket debris on the closest asteroid. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Every time. It makes you think that the it's a failed mission. <laughs> So we set up a research reactor design over here. Collagen to power it because we can't use the light. It's very low lux value. So water, uh, coal generators for power. That powers the generators right here. We're going to feed this some rich uranium and then we should be done afterwards. I'm a little bit worried that this is not enough. Honestly, I'm a little bit worried that it might not be enough. Part of me wants to, oh, yeah. Part of me wants to send more water on the rocket. <laughs> Part of me wants to send more water on the rocket, man. Which I think we should be fine to do. All right. So inside here, we're ready. Uh, let me take out the uranium. And make this sweep only. And we're going to bring some clothes. We're going to bring a couple of the suits. That's why I send a defrost friend. He's not one of us. All oh, feels bad, man. Feels bad. Do you also treat your pawns the same way in RimWorld? You get a guy randomly join your colony. And he's going to be one of the melee guys in the front of the colony. <laughs> so that he absorbs all the damage. I see you over there, man. They don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. Oh, man, that guy is hurt. I should really get him on the medical bed. Oh, they just don't want to, huh? I should make that a higher priority for them to rest.
All right, so who's on this rocket? Are we out of radiation? Oh, we are. All right, let's 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 add five more. Uh, Who's the crew here? It's Mr. Aero Capital Fellow by himself. Do we want to send a friend with them? We could. Who do we want to send with them? Let's send someone with low morale. Geek's a rancher. I don't want to send Geek. Silent one? Silent one's a rancher too. I can't I don't want to send him. <laughs> Slayer. Yeah, we sent Slayer. Alright, so Slayer and Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. Alright, both of you guys are gonna go help us out. Do the jumps. Once I get far enough in Rimworld, my melee pawns are the most tricked out. Best armor, best bionic, shield belt, persona, modest sword. See? Yo man, I don't like shield belts. It protects it protects the enemies from my assault barrage, from the assault rifles then. That's all I'm saying. I see you with the shield belts though. They can be really good. They can be really good. I see you over there under radar. The melee guys, I feel bad for them. Because they, they always tend to be the people that get the scars. Dude, nimble, tough, and then, uh, what is it? Jogger. Dude, nimble, tough, jogger, and bloodlust. I, I call everyone by their old name, man. I'm sorry. It's, it, it's because that's the memory I have when I first met you, dude. Like, there's a guy here who's changed his name five times. I still call him Irish sometimes. <laughs> I still call him, you know, his old names. Nimble Tough Brawler, dude, you gotta get Bloodlust. So that every time they kill someone, they get Max Mood Modifier, dude. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane, man. It works so well. He's in the melee. I think there's another one too. Masochist is really good. Because when they take that, when they have their scars and it's hurting, it's actually a mood buff. Brawler is best for melee. Additional hit chance is huge. That is true too. Nimble tough brawler is pretty good. Fast uh, jogger though is, is slept on. That that increase in run speed, man, it's really good. Not only for just fighting, but for hauling. If someone is down, getting uh getting someone with jogger is really nice. But I've had I've had like dude bloodlust on on a melee guy. It was nice. Anytime you get hit by tribals and you get people that fall down on the ground and they're not dead yet, I just make them kill them. And they just get max mood buff, dude. It's so good. Dude, yeah. Exosuit increases excavation. It gives you a flat rate modifier. It's really nice. It's really nice, Uglarvisk. That's the reason why I don't care for people to level up their digging skill. You just need the digging for the uh, different items they could actually mine through. Dude, I do prepare carefully. <laughs> I do prepare carefully. And I do do exactly that thing like that, man. It's kind of funny. Dude, I'm holding more than necessary. That's fine, I guess. Alright, let's move that up. And we're ready. Uh, we are going to land back to the ice asteroid. Crew. And we have oxygen. We have food. And it's time to launch. We're going to be getting the items that we need for the ice asteroid. And I think I've, we're going to want to go back to get some water for them. I'm thinking. I might want to bring in some more water. I'm a little bit worried about that for some reason. Even though we, we gave them 13 kilograms, 13,000 kilograms of water. Oh, there is a there is there's a mod that's in between called prepare moderately. <laughs> that's kind of funny, man. That's kind of funny. That's kind of crazy that you have a mod that does the something that's a in between. 
It's a half measure. But it might be what people are looking for. Prepare moderately. What a way to go. All right, so we're going to deliver the uranium into this bin, hopefully. And we put this on one so that I'm hoping they don't immediately deliver uranium to this. That's what I'm hoping for. Are you going to take water to an asteroid that's filled with ice? Dude, I have nothing I could really do to melt the water and then generate power and then like store it somewhere. <laughs> I, I could try, but it's going to be better for me to bring it myself. Trust me on that. We could technically open up the iron volcano, but I don't want to heat up the ambient area. And then if I did want to melt a place, I have to build like a separate box that's not touching anything cold so that we could actually apply thermal energy into a closed area. Otherwise, you just run into the issue of that it's too cold. Have you ever tried melting a frozen core before, Face for Radio? If you've ever tried doing that, you'll understand why it's like, Huh, why is he not just melting the ice for water? Gonna learn to get some more coffee. I'll see you over there, Uglarvis. Yo, man, give me one too. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit, man. Dude, it takes a lot of thermal energy to melt a lot of things in a cold planet. Because they're always touching, like side to side, top to tile. So a lot of the times, any thermal energy you make and you expend, it just chills the entire map instead of the closed area. Now, we could technically build some insulated tiles and do something like that. And then we would just have, like, the dupes mine out the snow and ice and, you know, drop it off. But I feel like that's cool. But I think what we're going to want to do is just uh, add more water this way. <laughs> and then we'll send a rocket back. This one, too. Yep, I thought I was going to take my cool steam geyser from one ward and melt it with that, but nope. No. Oh, man. I released a 10,000 kilogram per tile petroleum box, and I had like 50 tiles in the infinite storage. And it didn't even make a dent. <laughs> I had 300 degrees... No, no, 200 degrees petroleum. And it was it was not even close, man. I had, I think it was in total, 100 tons of uh, 200 degree petroleum. And I released my infinite pressure box to let it all drip into the ice. And I melted maybe like one-fifth of my frozen core before the petroleum all solidified. <laughs> I was like, oh, that sucks, man. That sucks. And I was like impressed how hard it was to actually melt it. I feel like, man, people need to try to do that. Everyone that plays Oni, try to melt your frozen core. And that gives you a great idea of how cold maps are like really tough to deal with. Looks like we need some more uranium. Shouldn't be too bad though. Yeah, I started putting water there and it just froze and got bigger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, man. That's the funny thing about that. It'll start freezing. And then it's like, oh, it's just growing, dude. Holy crap. I got scared because all my old CO2 started to disappear. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's another thing. You, um, have you guys ever do the uh, 100k challenge? There is a challenge map on the uh, Oni workshop, on the Steam workshop. And it's called the 100 Kelvin Challenge. I believe 100 Kelvin in this game is like what? Let me actually translate that properly. 100K to C. It's minus 173. 100 Kelvin is minus 173 degrees Celsius. And there is a map where it's extreme rhyme. So it's the rhyme map almost, right? Where you have ice everywhere and it's really cold everywhere except it's 170 negative 
So there's a lot of weird things that happen at that. You start getting all the seal 2 that your dupes breathe out immediately melts into liquid seal 2 and then immediately becomes solid seal 2. All the pee water you pee out becomes ice upon your dupes making a mess. It's it's a weird playstyle, man. Like at that point, you technically don't need bathrooms anymore because you can't have bathrooms. The the <laughs> the water in the bathrooms freeze. They pee out ice. It sounds painful, man. But I feel like I need to do that challenge at some point. The 100k challenge. If you guys haven't played with that, man, it's 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 pretty fun. I believe if they don't give you shovels, it's going to be a nice time. If they give you shovels, it might be too easy. I have to be real. <laughs> they give you shovels, man. It might be too easy. Alright, so we have zero seconds. Oh, we're there, boys. Alright, so... I need a ladder right there. Inside... I need to swap out the suits. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow is going to give you a new suit. You're going to get the new baller suit for the space. You need to stop drooling, man. Y'all could eat if y'all is hungry. I think I have different, uh, different definitions of fun. Hey, man, sometimes you want the challenge. Oh, I, 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 I boiled the water accidentally. Oh, F, dude. All right, let me insulate some of this. Feels bad. I boiled my water. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so there's no uranium here. There's water, though. All right, so we need to start moving the coal. All right, so this is not sweep only. Go inside. Oh, he's sleeping. What a bastard. We need to drop this. All the coal on the ground. Wait a second. Oh, no, I was going to say. Wait a second. Where is he taking the uranium? Oh, no, no one has it. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Wait, you didn't wear your suit? What the hell, dude? We just gave you a suit. And the guy is supposed to wear it outside? Aw, oh, come on, man. Just put the suit on. What a guy, man. Alright, so this is fine. I think we delivered enough coal. No, 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 no. Why are you storing it in here? No, dude. No, you're supposed to move. Oh, did he complete the job? Did he complete the job? How? This is priority one, dude. What are you doing? Deconstruct this. Jesus Christ, my dupes. Trying to sabotage me, man. I can't believe it. He was not supposed to fill that in. Alright, first things first. We gotta fill this up with coal. Alright, Slayer needs to get the new suit. What? What do you mean? Why is it black screen? Is there a priority zero mod? Is that a thing? Wear the suit. You're inside. You're gonna wear this suit. Oh, this is a fake yellow alert. No, guys, people of chat. 
we have found a way to have the yellow alert alarm while not doing anything. We turned off the yellow alert, but it, it, it's still running. I'm sorry, you guys. My rocket is glitched. It exists. I just don't know what it's called. Oh, so it's not called that. Interesting. How come no one wants to sweep the coal, though? Come on, man. Can you guys start sweeping the coal? These guys are not that strong. They're only carrying 400 kilograms at a time. Alright, so we gotta wait for them to make the deliveries. We're going to insulate the pipe so they don't boil inside. And we have to keep this unbuilt. Due to the fact that it looks like we can't stop the deliveries from happening. Deep fried peanut butter. What's good, man? How you is? Hi, legit. Hi, chat. What is good? Deep fried peanut butter. How you doing today? How is the Tuesdays? We're setting up our reactor design right now to uh, open the tear. And we just completed the uh, cosmic archaeology. How do I turn off your alert? Trying to stay cool. I feel that, man. I'm sweating right now. We've encountered a new glitch. I yellow alerted my suit so that my dupe stops ignoring it. And then the moment he put the suit on, it glitched out my yellow alert. Even though I tell him to take off the suit and we change the priority of the suit, this room now is stuck in yellow alert mode. And we can't do anything about it. Feels bad, man. No, no, the item that they selected for yellow yellow alert is, is no longer existing. <laughs> it's a glitch. It's a weird glitch. You know what we could check? I could unequip the suit. Oh, there it is. And then we make him wear it again. Oh, that's all you had to do? See, the crazy thing is I didn't even change the priority. I just unequipped it, re-equipped it. Yo, that's wild. <laughs> the solution had nothing to do with the priority commands. That's kind of crazy. Hey, man, at least we figured it out somewhat. I don't have to listen to the alarm bells anymore, PogChamp. Alright, so we need to deliver the coal. And then... We need to move the uranium in here as well. Oh, it's already there. So we're, all, we're almost done. We just gotta fill up the coal. And we'll be good. I think once we finish the pipes, we'll have two people delivering the coal. It'll be a lot faster. All right, so I am running five Rad Bolt generators, which is exactly the amount of power four coal generators makes. Five times 480 comes out to be exactly 2,400 watts. As you can see, it's a 2.4K on this wire. The crazy thing is, is that uh, four times 600 is the same amount. So it's exactly enough. Now, of course, that means we're going to have this run constantly, which means our coal gens are going to run constantly. So what we're going to need to do is figure out how much coal we need to generate or have. This is 600 watts per one kilogram. So per four kilograms, I have this. Let's not consider any amount of coal already stored inside. So it's four kilograms per second. 600 seconds in a cycle so we go through tw two point <laughs> twenty four hundred kilograms so that's 2.4 tons a cycle so we have about what four cycles worth of coal right now 
in the 9.2. We could fill this up to 20. And then that goes up to what? 8 cycles? I think 8 cycles is good. So yeah, I think I actually need to put all 20 tons inside. Which is fair. Right? Because we are going to try to burn through 500 kilograms of enriched uranium. Usually though... 10 kilograms i think I, I think normally 100 kilograms is all we need in order to charge up the tear opener i want to say that's it usually 100 kilograms of enriched uranium which would last 10 days which would be the 20 tons so we have more than enough uranium actually that's kind of crazy oh he dropped the coal slayer we need to get you a new suit This has no oxygen. This has no oxygen. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellows eating this nice berry slunch. We got eight tons right there still. You're not trapped? What are you talking about, man? Alright, so we have one suit left. Uh, let's look at the two dupes. Who has the carrying capacity? Or we can let them do this now, and then we have them change up later. So it's Slayer that's going to be the better dude. Okay. We'll give Slayer the suit later. We just want to move all the coal outside of the rocket first. Because what they're going to do is run out of breath, stand outside, drop the coal, it should fall to the ground. And then that way, when we give him the new suit, he'll be able to just make the delivery, hopefully. Eleven tons. We're getting there. We're getting there. Thirteen tons. We're getting close. We're getting close. All right. So we're not going to build the reactor till we come back with the other rocket, just because we need to bring water for it, anyways. And there's no water coming from here. Feels bad. 13 tons. This is another ton. That's 14. And then we probably have what? Four more? Yeah, four more inside. You're starting to get radiation sickness from standing outside. What's the map? Dude, 250 rads? That's kind of that's kind of heavy. Yeah, that's kind of heavy. That's double what we have at home. Hello? Why am I at the bottom of the map? That's weird. Yeah, 125 back at home. Alright, so the rocket is charged, so we could send this back anytime we need to. And I should release more water. We need to fill up the uh, reservoir anyways. We actually have enough. Five tons. I don't think we need more than that. 15 we're getting close this is going to be 17 almost we're almost done oh are you taking damage from radiation no it just looks like you're taking damage you're, you're 100 out of 100 okay cool i got worried for a second did we do the established several colonies uh part of the uh wind uh wind condition okay we did Sometimes you forget about turning on and activating the pods. 17. We should be able to get to 18 something. Yeah. Just a little bit more. Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow is doing his best. Little does he know dropping the coal is beneficial to us. Okay, 18-2, 18, 6, and 440. So we'll be at 19 tons. That's not bad. All right, all right. 
So we're going to swap suits for Slayer. That's going to be a full suit. Nice. And the last coal delivery. And we'll be able to go back home. Nice, nice. Nineteen tons. Let's go. So it's time for the crew. We're going home. And the crew is these two guys. Nice. All right. Shouldn't be too fast, or it shouldn't take too long. We're both in. So zero out of sixteen. We didn't leave anyone behind. We already have the refined metal here for the reactor. We should be good. We'll drop the steam down the swine. Hopefully the cold environment condenses that into water fast. I would want to go all the way down so that the oxygen goes up, but I think this is okay. All right, this drive is going to take me two cycles. That's not too bad. Let's release a little bit more water while we wait. It's going to be time, boys. Time to breach the tear. Well... We're going to have to come back, charge this rocket, because that's going to be our fastest rocket to go to the far tear on the left. That's going to be right there. Once we open it, that's going to be the final mission. All right, so since we just left, we could go with these guys now, right? So this is going to be... Cyberdyne? Spellmore. Uh... We have suits on there, right? So I shouldn't have to worry. Oh, it's 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 filled with oxygen as well. Nice. Uh, let's deliver some suits then. And before we bring this to crew, let's actually get some suits up there. Oh, we have some at the bottom. Nice. Oh! No power? Hold up. I'm not generating enough power. What's happening? Oh, this is happening. We're getting minor deliveries at the bottom. Even though this has at the bottom. All right. So in that case, let's do that for now so that we get full bubbles coming out while we fill up this one. We just need to make sure we have power for right now. So, oh, I am not making lumber deliveries. All right, let me go to industrial ingredients lumber. And we need to do that now, dude. Holy crap. Y'all sweep the lumber fam. Thank you. We need to make ethanol. All right, so that should be enough. And then I will pipe in this now to allow that to try to make up the difference. Hopefully we'll be okay now. All right, so suits, it's there, it's charging. It's coming in, it's coming in. My reactors are hot, I need to start cooling that down. And I think we're good. So crew change, we're going back to the ice planet. And we're ready. Once the crew members get inside. Not bad, not bad. Delivering the lumber, good stuff. Making sure we have lumber to process. It's still only 3,000 grams though. 500 per distiller. So this can't run constantly while we're stockpiling the ethanol still. This burns through... how much? Two kilograms per second, and I'm only generating three. <laughs> That's kind of gross. As long as we don't overdraw the power, we'd be fine. What's drawing all this power? Oh, my suit docks? Maybe. 
Looks like these pumps have stopped uh, turning on, which is fine. Yeah, there's not a lot of things that are running right now. What's drawing all my power? Uh, lights, gas pumps, kind of. Ethanol distiller is drawing power for itself to make ethanol, maybe. Outside of that, not a lot of things. Oh, aqua tuner up top. Aqua tuner over here, aqua tuner over here. That pump. Honestly, not that much, though. Constant draws are the deodorizers and the lights in the Bristol Blossom Room. I think we'll be fine, though. I think we'll be fine. As long as we deliver the lumber this time. Alright, so they're off. We have enough, I think, waiting in the conveyor line. That, yeah, I don't have to sweep anymore. So, that's going to be enough to do the final charge for the rocket. And we're just waiting for these guys to kind of uh, swap positions. Good stuff, good stuff. People of chat, hope you guys are having a good day today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you guys for coming out. We're not done yet, but I just want to thank you guys. Just because a lot of the times, you know, if you guys happen to have to leave, lurk, or head away, you guys might not hear me thank you guys. So I want to thank you guys now so that you guys hear me, the people that are here now. Appreciate you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for supporting the stream by being here and watching. But yo, thank you guys so much. Of course, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to help, happy to answer. And of course, we are nearing completion. We're going to be opening the tear and then we just got to fly out. I think we're good though. Doing really good. Can't really complain about this. Hmm. I kind of... Dude, where is this polluted oxygen coming from? I'm a little bit confused. Like, where is this coming from? I appreciate you too, too legit. Thank you, X-Cage. I see you over there, man. Y'all ever get random PO2 bubbles like this? Like, what's happened? Alright, we're going to change the carbon gas. Because that doesn't exist in our game yet. We're just going to pump out all the gas from over here. Because why not? Why not? Oh man, how many are suits? Two? One, two... I probably should start making some more. Otherwise, though, dude, we're doing really good. Dude, look at our heat map. The hot areas, the cold areas, the temperate areas, the somewhat hotter areas. Another hot area. Very controlled, though, except for right here, where the Wii's words are kind of just doing their thing. Very controlled areas right now, in terms of uh, the thermal maps. It's not bad, it's not bad. We actually never broke the majority of the ice biome on the top. Pretty happy with that. Never got to the bottom. Never actually have to utilize the steam vent. I was thinking about utilizing it to heat up my cold water sources. We have a lot of cold salt water, right? And I wanted to warm it up. I tend to go overboard cooling everything, even though I don't need to. It's, it's one of those things that I feel like if you've gotten, you know, if you've gotten burned before <laughs> by having a hot environment, you tend to have that as a result. One time in the very first year I was playing Oxygen Not Included, I was playing on a map and what happened was, was that my electrolyzers generated hot enough oxygen to break my pumps and because of that I stopped getting oxygen now the problem was was that I didn't notice and because all the oxygen in the room was also hot and I didn't have suits yet I ran into the problem that my dupes couldn't go inside to repair anything because they didn't have suits 
crazy thing was I was using the hot oxygen to pump into my suits because they didn't care the temperature of the oxygen you, you feed into your ammo suits. But because the pumps broke, I couldn't pump oxygen into the suits. So I couldn't use the ammo suits. And then I was playing on Oasis. That's the map with a lot of granite everywhere like this. And they don't give you a lot of algae. They give you rust instead. So I ran out of oxygen generators. My dupes struggled to repair everything, and I didn't know why at the time. And that was, I think, my first time my colony kind of failed. That was a long time ago, though. And I was like, damn. <laughs> Things kind of snowball, dude. In, in both progression and with colony failures. Like, one small thing could cause everything to kind of just lose its balance. I've ran out of dirt before. You do, me too. Me too. One time I ran out of dirt and I didn't think about it. Where I was like, oh yeah, I'll just switch off of mealwood to something else. And then I didn't realize my glossy Drekos lost their dirt for the mealwood. And I wasn't generating plastic anymore or meat from the glossies. I was like, oh, that's actually a problem. <laughs> that's actually going to be a problem. I kind of need the plastic for data, uh, data research. And then I was like, man, all right, we got to get away from mealwood faster instead of just wasting it on that. I'm actually running out of dirt right now. Making dirt's not that bad. A lot of people don't know, but there's a lot of ways of generating dirt. If you guys didn't know anything that's organic, so that means if you go to your storage bin and you go to the organic tab, anything in the organic tab right here, I believe if you heat it up, becomes dirt. I'm actually going to check the rock pile. I'm not sure if that's... Oh, you can't heat up rock piles? Oh, you can't. Oh, that sucks. My pips won't plant the trees. Working on creating natty tiles. There's strats for that as well. I see you over there, though. Oh, <gasps> We're out of power again. What's happening? I'm actually out of ethanol all the way. What's burning my power, dude? What's actually burning away all my power? How am I running into power issues right now? Rot piles become pee dirt after enough time. Oh, I see. I see. That's right. That's right. I forget about that. Dude, why am I losing power? What, what am I spending it on? That's not turned on. That's off. Aqua Tuner is doing its thing. Is it this? All right, we'll, we'll cut that again. All right, something, something, something's the matter. Some be the matter right now. Something's bopping me, bopping me on the face. Alright, we gotta build this so we can power the ethanol distillers. If we could power that, we're gonna be good. Gotta use the regular toilets. I have, uh... Pakus and compost. I just waited too long. Once I get the space for Pips to set up, I'm fine. But I only have 19 tons left. I'm 2k cycles in, 500 tons of dirt. Can never have enough dirt, my man. I see you guys over there, man. I see you guys over there. Dirt technically is life. Believe it or not, dirt is life. Alright, so we have that connected. And we need these hamster wheels max priority. Because, man, they have no power. We just gotta run to generate some ethanol. To feed into the gens a couple times. I turned off this generator or a power pump setup. And what else can I cut and turn off? 
Like, there's honestly nothing that I really need. I guess the, the lights... Technically, the rusty oxidizer doesn't need to turn on anymore. So we could turn this off. Technically, I don't need to make algae anymore. So we could turn that off as well. And the suits need power. That's fine. Is it my soda? Dude, is it my pixel pack, man? I'd be kind of mad if my pixel pack's the reason why. <laughs> I'm losing so much power. What the hell, dude? What a time to have power issues at the end. What am I even spending power on, dude? I'm confused. And it's definitely because of your Aqua Tuners. See, in my situation, it's weird because I don't even know what I'm doing to cause the problem. Like, this is a closed loop. This is coming from the top. I cut that off already. These Auto Supers loaders shouldn't cause any problems. We cut off those pumps as well. Atmo suits charging the suits, maybe? That's... Oh, this pump is on. I mean, that shouldn't be a bad thing, though. But it's so easy. Just uh, adding stuff here and there. It's true. It, 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 sh it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, slowly we're just adding more and more consumers. Then we're actually able to, cons uh, to actually uh, supply 100%. It is my fault, 100%. I do believe that. I did it to myself. Oh, isn't this the consequences of my own actions? I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> that stuff has become such a meme, dude. Oh, isn't this the consequences of my own actions? We meet again. They don't think it be like it is, but it do. And I guess it really do be like that sometimes. Alright, so... We're trying to keep it up. Trying to keep it up. Imagine something crazy happened, like my automation line right here for the Petrogen wasn't actually connected. That would be kind of wild. And that would mean why I would burn all my ethanol. We also have emergency ethanol right here, technically. So I think we ran out of lumber for a while. Now that we're sweeping it, we're fine. Was Oh man, I really don't know how we caused that. That was the first time I ran out of power in our uh, ethanol line right here feels weird man we, we've been great on it for the longest time i wonder if it's because they're not tuned up oh you know what could have happened am i out of refined metal Ooh, that might be it oh did you guys hear that mamba was dreaming and he just meowed for no reason And he's still asleep. Oh my god. My baby mambas. Yep. I am low on iron. Alright man. We're going to be selecting aluminum for this. So yeah. My power control station ran out of metal. For tuning up my setup. And then I was running inefficiently. It makes sense now. It makes sense now. So now we're going to be making some microchips over here. Dude. My kitty cat that's sleeping right now just meowed out of nowhere. I want to give him a hug. He's okay, though. He's okay. Mamba's doing the big tired yawns. He's going to go back to bed. Oh, and he yells again. I hear you, Mamba. Alright, he wants his rubs. He wants his rubs. Oh, my, uh... 
My rocket's there. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that means it's time to build the reactor. And I'm pretty sure the dupes are going to be able to handle that. This is already connected to the output pipe. And yeah, this is not grounded. Idle, holding their breath. Uh, let me swap that. Let me do that. And let me do Cyberdyne. Same thing for Spellborn. Have them equip the suits. And then we need a ladder. Okay. Alright, so ladder here and here. We build that, and then we build the research reactor. Cool. Sorry guys, Mama needs me. He had the bad dreams, he needs his head rubs. You know what? This is Mamba's time. <laughs> this is Mamba's time. gets his rubs. He's trying to lick my hands. That's Mamba, you guys. He needs his rubs. He really wants them. He's a beautiful boy. Good looking kitty cat. And he really wants his attention right now after having his bad dreams. How come my dupes don't want to leave? Feels bad, man. Oh, I picked the wrong mineral type. Okay. Let me fix this really quick. So, sorry, Mamba. No more attention, babies. We'll take you off the camp. Alright, so that's the wrong mineral type. What I have in here is Mafic. So we need to go into here and choose the Mafic ladder. It's because they can't leave to pick up the granite from the ground in order to build the ladder that they're not building. It. There we go. So guys, that's Mamba. That's the kitty cat, if you guys are wondering. I think he woke up from a nightmare or a bad dream. And now he just wants a little bit of attention. But he's okay. He's okay. Alright, alright. Get the reactor. It's reactor time. Pipes are not freezing. How come water is not exiting the system? That's one thing I'm curious about. How come that's not a thing? How come we're not pumping out the water? We have battery power. It is connected. Wait, why, why is that not happening? How, how come we're not releasing water? Hmm? I'm confused. Uh, let me do this. Huh. I didn't cut the water. Why is it not filling out with water? I'm confused, man. Does anyone know why that is? Alright, safety save. <laughs> safety save. Just in case. Something weird's going on. 
how come we're not releasing water? I should be doing that automatically. That's why we have the pipeline there in the first place. It's output into intake. No, but we have two bubbles right there. Typically, you would you would fill that up. Even though the tanks are full, you would fill up the pipeline because there is a need for the water in the pipeline. Right? The water outlet is connected here. Oh my god, did something stupid happen? There's no outlet water. Oh my god. I, oh, that's that's really stupid. That that's a thing. Okay. I'm going to risk this. I will just because I want a little bit of uh I want a little bit of excitement. Cuz why not, right? So I can explain what happened. I didn't disconnect my output right here. If you don't disconnect this, you dump the water outside that I was filling in. I believe that's what happened. Because my water tanks are empty. And I didn't add a single bubble to this. Because this is not even finished building yet. So that means why I was filling it up and we got up to 6 tons. The moment I think we were started flying, it started releasing the water out via this pump. That's the only thing that makes sense. Ah, oh, that's really stupid if that happened then. I'm actually kind of mad if that's the case. Alright, so we'll build the reactor. Uh, it's time to go home. And we'll set that up, but we won't launch. And that's because I need to do this. There's going to be the uranium. All right, it's on. That would make sense. Feels bad. Feels bad indeed. What's going on, uh, Ghost Rider? How you doing today? Hope you're doing well. I ran into some issues myself. All right, so we just got to leave. We're going to come back with some water, though. All right, so as I thought, the steam would try to condense, but it's too cold. So I'm hoping the steam becomes water and starts moving downwards, melting other areas. And it should never be a problem for us over here. This is going to melt soon because of the nuclear waste. Nice. And then the more we melt, the further the ice drops. So that the hot steam does not become a problem. So this is at minus 23. Oh, it's heating up fast. Look at that pea water. Look at that thermal energy that's being spread. I wonder if they're going to melt the ice up here and open up the iron volcano. I'm happy this is dormant. <laughs> I'm so happy that's dormant, dude. Oh, this is disabled. Oh my god, I let this run for how long? There we go. Looks like now that we have all of this running, this could actually run. My power is actually break even at five. <laughs> Dude, this is actually break even. Oh my god, that's gross. The power's actually not moving. Have you guys seen this before? <laughs> the power's actually not moving. It's staying at 5k flat, dude. That's impressive. As long as they have uh, coal in here. It's going to be... Oh, it's going down. That would have to be from the arm sweeping or the runoff for the power leak. That would be the only reason that happens. In which case, I would have to disable the last Radbolt generator for a second. 
And if I do do that, we'd, we'd be good. But I think for now, we just let this run. Alright, so this guy takes 2.2 cycles to get back. We are going through... Oh my god. We are going through water, though. We really are. 9%. 9% costs 2 tons of water. That's kind of impressive. So, with 10 tons of water, we're going to get, what, 50%? What the hell? Dude, we need a lot of water. Dude, this is happening again. <laughs> it's the, the water shenanigans, man. Ah, oh, crap. They don't think it be like it is, but it do. Alright, hopefully we'll be okay. So, we're gonna wait for that. Fill it up with water. Shouldn't be too bad. We'll have to see if we have to reset. Because it's gonna take time to burn off all the uranium, honestly. Yeah, we have way too much. Uh, I could also cut the power from this sweeper because it's no longer going to be needed. I have 170 kilograms of enriched uranium. That's way more than enough. That's just going to drain my power if I let it sweep a couple times. Yep, this is slowly going down. All it's going to take, though, is like one Radbolt generator to run out of power for a second and we'll be okay again. Oh man. Way too dank. Way too dank indeed. Don't worry guys. We got this. We got this. Alright, 24%. It's looking alright. It's looking alright. 24%. 25. So one fourth of the way. We might actually have enough water. We might. Because we're at 7 tons still. And we're at 26%. We would be around 80% water. If I burned through that. So. 1.6 cycles. Taking some time. But I think we're getting there. Maybe I should have pumped up the water from down here. Strats. That would have been strats man. Dump out the water that cools down by touching the ice biome. Thirty percent. Are we actually hitting one thousand? And it's charging too fast. Oh, we are. We're charging too fast. I mean, I guess it's better to be at a thousand than not at a thousand. Dude, yeah, we're charging. We're charging too fast. I, I can't believe that's actually a thing. We're gonna we're gonna hit a thousand a couple times and have a couple of rad bolts just kind of blow up. Hey yo, hey Uglarvis, coming in with the six months. Thank you so much for the six months, man. On that six month streak as well. Appreciate you, Uglarvis. Thank you so much. And of course, welcome back to the city. Enjoy the emotes, the 20 dice ad free viewing. Don't forget that legit sub badge. You know what it is though. Thank you so much for the support. We might have enough. Hey, man. Hey. I like to believe and have faith sometimes, man. That might be the first time someone in Twitch chat hit me with copium. That literally might be the first time anyone's ever done that on my channel. The emote's been there for months, dude. Years, almost. But that might be the first time someone's used it. <laughs> Just saying, man. I see Wolf that face for radio. We're at 2k uh, jewels now for the power. I think we're actually going to be fine if we actually go uh, without power for a couple seconds. Alright, we're still at 500 kilograms. And we're at 47%. We actually might make it. 
Because we're going to hit 50% before the water empties out. Just saying, man. Oh, dude, it's burning. It's burning through the power fast. I mean, the rap bolt's fast right now. Is that a good thing? Okay, we're back up to a thousand. <laughs> and a thousand. Fifty-two percent. Fifty-two percent. Okay, the five K is gonna start soon. Fifty-three. We might actually have enough, man. No copium. No copium. We might actually have enough. See, my my. Okay, now it's starting to tap in at fifty-four. I, I'm starting to believe. I'm starting to believe. This is one of the least efficient things I've ever seen. I love it. Yo, man. Who's who's talking about efficiency, man? We just got to get things done. The heat is perfectly proportioned out so that it doesn't reach the reactor. I don't know how we did this, but somehow it's doing it. And I'm kind of happy with it. And then, uh, you know, we got to do what you got to do. Dude, imagine the reactor melts down and entombs the tear. Oh, man. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't you put that evil on me, man. We got to beat the game today, man. <laughs> I don't want any hiccups. I see you over the Cthulhu. Me, 48072. Hope you're doing well today. Hope you're having a nice Tuesdays, man. Thank you for tuning in. All right, all right. We're almost back home. We have to make the decision whether or not we should send the rocket back with water. I'm going to go for we don't need it. I don't think we need it. My Draco Ranch is on YouTube. That's actually my most popular video. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. The best Draco Ranch. My most popular video, man. But yes, Ghost Rider, it is. There's been a couple of changes to it that makes it a little bit easier to make, but it's not required. Like, uh, one of the changes, I mean, I don't want to look away yet. One of the changes we made to it is that uh, we made the liquid lock two tiles deeper. Or one tile deeper, because it used to be like this. And we do it like that so that we could spill a minimal amount of water instead of full tiles. So you need a one tile deeper setup to have minimal water. Outside of that, it's relatively the same. The only other thing I would mention too is that you only need the bottom layer right above the farm tiles to be the specific gas type you need. So you could max pressure it with hydrogen like this too. So that the hydrogen pushes down on the one layer of CO2. That way you get maximum growth inside if you care for that. Need to make one and yours will fit the spot I want to put it. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So of course you could always make a double stack. And use a uh, pocket on the side to be a shearing room slash drowning room. It's always up to you though. Oh, guess who's back? Back again. Mamba's back. Tell your friends. Hey, he's back to napping. Tiles in my Draco farm are 907 years old. Zero maintenance. I see you over there, man. Set it and forget it. That's the way to do it, man. Dude, I think we're good. Three tons of water. And... We're at 77%. I think we're going to be fine. I don't think we need to fill up water and send it back. However, I do need to actually uh, open this before the reactor fails. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Nice, nice. The only thing you need to do is have ranchers now, though. Make sure they uh, cut the plastic off of the Dracos. But after you get that done, easy, easy, uh, easy pickets.
83. We still got 2.7 tons of water. I, I want to say we got it, boys. I want to say we got it. Oh, man, I'm a little bit worried. I am a little bit worried. Uh, the terrace stays open forever. The terrace stays open forever once it's open. You just gotta open for the first time. Nine to one. So how it works is the moment it's fully charged, we have to hit the go button and it's gonna pop up. And there's a couple of other things that needs to happen. You need to have clear space right above the center. Well, you need these three tiles. That's basically the three tiles of the building to have space above it to reach space. So typically if it's a deeper setup, you have to mine out some of the distance between the surface and the diamond tiles right there. Outside of that though, there's a button you have to hit. And then once it's open, it starts a meteor shower on this map. And uh, after it's done, we're going to be good. And I think I have enough water to last me past that. We're getting there, boys. 98. Come on. 99. Question mark. 99. And we're in. All right, all right. So we need to charge that last percent. And then a button's going to come up. There it is. Let's go. Guys, have you guys seen Dragon Ball Z? There's, there's something called Ultra Instinct. And this is what happens. Dude, the prismatic light. So beautiful. I hear Goku's theme song already, man. Oh, and there's the meteor showers. Holy shit. All right, boys, we're done. And it's open. It's time. It's time, boys. We're traveling to the Terra. Who are we sending? Guys, who are we sending? Let's be real. We need to send it, right? Who are we sending? Do we have any volunteers in chat? I could give you guys the... I could give you guys, you know... All right, we can send both you guys. Uglarvis and Geek. We can send both you guys. Send all the dupes we can. Last time we did that, everyone peed their pants, though, because they couldn't share the bathroom. Someone is nominating Cthulhu. Okay, we do that. Me, I'm sorry. This is a full colony at the moment. We don't have anyone you could take. Don't worry, though. We'll give you back your channel points. Would be a first. Oh man. Yeah, man. Everyone's already named and taken. Sorry about that, me. My poor old dupe has gone to the terror multiple times now. Uglervis is always gone. Alright. Cthulhu is going to go with the pilot. Uh, Uglarvis is going to go to show Geek the ropes. That way Geek doesn't mess up. And then it's going to be the three of you guys, man. I'm sorry about that, me. Everyone has uh, been named already, so it's very unfortunate. Need to do 100 dupe challenge, plenty of space for all the redeemers. I've actually done that before, X Cage. In the base game, when, if you remember, there used to be something called the sightseeing module, right? And that used to be something you could build, the sightseeing module. I actually used to make hydrogen rockets, and I would put seven sightseeing modules on each rocket, and we sent out all 100 dupes at the same time to the Pearl Terror. So we launched all, I think it was uh, at the end, it came out to be like eight rockets or something, or 12 rockets, because the rocket pilot that's driving it doesn't have to be in a sightseeing module. So instead of seven, it's seven plus the pilot, so it's eight. And I think it was like eight rockets or something like that. And we sent everyone in. And you know what happens? The moment we hit launch, we lost the game because the, the entire colony got lost. 
<laughs> that was the funniest thing, dude. So since we sent everyone, there was zero out of a hundred duplicates on the colony, and it said that we lost a game. Do you want to start over, or you could wait for the printing pod to print out a new dupe? I was like, I'll wait. And then we saw the cutscene. <laughs> it was it was it's funny, man. That's funny. That's rad. We just ran the research reactor. And it's time, guys. It is time to go. So, the crew is going to be Cthulhu. It's going to be Uglar Visk. And it's going to be Geek. Good luck, you guys. Hope you have a safe trip. Wait, we selected the tear, right? They should have a tear icon for that, to be honest. Should be a hidden achievement. Lose to win. I know, right? The itty bitty rocket. Hey man, the short rockets are faster. Size matters. When you're very long and tall like that, you move a lot slower. But when you're short and steady, you win the race. Because you got the speed, baby. It's all about speed. What are we waiting for? That's it. Wait, why are we not launching? What? No one wants to drive? Is Cthulhu not actually able to drive? Aha. Oh my god, Cthulhu did not want to start driving. He's actually a rocket pilot. Start driving, son. There we go. <laughs> Cthulhu is a pilot, dude. He, he doesn't want to show that he has a piloting skill. Otherwise, he gets picked for uh, doing databanks. It's not the size of the rocket, it's the motion of the ocean. When you apply a little bit of lotion. Okay, I see you over there, man. Face for radio. That used to be one of my titles in the game Ragnarok Online. Back, back when I was in high school. I was a... Uh, guillotine fist monk which is a one shot kill move but I have to cool down for 5 minutes so in a pvp match I take one person out before I lose <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie but that was my guild title motion of the ocean and my character's name was lotion they don't think it be like it is man but it do Back, back in the day, man. Back 10, 20 years ago. Geek doesn't want to do it. Feels bad. You already left, man. I'm sorry. I will turn the rocket around. I swear. Behave, kids. I see you over there, man. Everyone knows Cthulhu is that mom that has a kid that's, you know, all goth. And, you know, he's like, I, I want to go to a rave. And Cthulhu was like, sure, son. We'll take you to a rave. And uh, he's driving. You guys seen that picture, man? It's like a prototypical mom. And then she's driving her son to like an event. And he looks exactly like Edward Scissorhands. That, that's, that's basically Cthulhu driving the people in the rocket right now, man. Not going to lie. Got the hands off the wheel, dude. What a guy. Still driving, though. Three cycles. Can you even yell in a rocket? Oh, you guys are not permitted to eat. We'll give everyone the ability to eat the nice berry lunch. Why not? Oh, no! Oh, that's a lot of damage. Guys, that is what happens when a reactor does not receive its coolant. It throws a temper tantrum similar to a three-year-old at a grocery store it's embarrassing but it's not that bad you know someone's gonna clean it up it's not gonna be us but uh is the tear still open yes it is that's all that matters and look at that that's a lot of damage man that's a lot of damage you know what's impressive we made zero corium we made zero corium 
how is that a thing? So when you go through a research reactor meltdown, you make an element called corium. We made zero. We actually didn't make a single bit of corium. I'm actually kind of impressed. This is solid nuclear waste right there. How did we not make a single tile of corium? I, I don't know how we achieved that, but I feel like that's kind of impressive. Oh, they're still shooting rad bolts, dude. That's funny. So, post-meltdown, you get a lot of radiation. This is actually a lot more than how much a reactor can generate. So, after a reactor meltdown, the amount of radiation doubles, and then it slowly goes down over, I think it's four cycles. So the radiation is going to slowly start to decay. But after initially the meltdown, it's more than it can actually produce. So that's kind of interesting. Not going to lie. I guess the temperature was too cold for us to actually uh, generate something like Corium. That's potentially a thing, right? Well, anyways, we're okay with that. We're okay. Oh, and this is actually backed up now. Oh, this is hitting max pressure. Oh, that's kind of funny. Oh, we're waiting for this to close for the first time. That's not bad. Not bad. And then I will cut this. Oh, no. Auto save lag. Not bad. Not bad. Cut that line. Cool, cool. Pruning pod. Let's reject everybody. So we're good. Yep, ethanol's good too. Looking like they're finally caught up. And that's because uh, we got a new refined metal for the petroleum draw, which is nice. Good stuff, good stuff. That means I could hook up everything back onto the power line, right? Because I don't have to worry about that anymore. Nice, nice. Alright, so we're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. And now we're just waiting for our rocket. How long this is going to take? Three cycles. That's what? 15 minutes? That's not going to take too long. The people of chat, I hope you guys are ready to see the end cutscenes, and we're going to beat the game. Finish our playthrough of the Ethanol Colony. And uh, not going to lie, man. I feel like there is a way for us to make a colony based off of uh, just planning arbitraries. Oh, <gasps> a cuddle pip. Aw, oh, man. I get one at the end of the game, dude. It feels bad. I should have got one earlier. I mean, I did, but we didn't do anything with it. Feels bad. I feel like there is a way to make a full colony run off of ethanol. Like, completely. Like, how we're doing the polluted dirt right here to make oxygen. I feel like there is a capability for a colony to run strictly off of that. But I think it's going to be tedious. Because you need a plant probably... I, I want to say double this. You're going to need like double the size of this in terms of uh, arbitrary ranching. And I feel like only then would you generate enough polluted dirt to actually use as a breathing apparatus. Not only that, you would have to keep your colony count kind of low too. Because the more colonists you have, the more trees you're going to need in order to uh, generate polluted dirt for oxygen. So if I keep my 16 and I double the amount of trees, I would probably have enough polluted dirt to generate purely all the oxygen I need to breathe. I feel like there's a good chance. At the same time, I feel like if I utilize oxyferns a little bit better, we would have a, a, a easier time as well. 
Like I probably should have made an oxifern pit somewhere where we pump in the CO2 instead of storing the CO2 for the soda fountain. We could use a similar setup and overflow the extra CO2 to feed into the oxiferns. That should have been something I should have added in. But I didn't even use the oxiferns in general. Just thinking back about the playthrough, some of the things I would have changed. I would say that if I did do all of that, like doubling up the arbitries, adding the oxifern, and dumping the CO2 into that, deodorizing all my polluted oxygen, I feel like we would have took an extra 200 cycles. 200 to 500, depending on how much I need to get to get the balance. 200 to 500 more cycles in order to get to where we are now. I would have not needed the rusty oxidizer setup though, but that's not that time consuming. I would have needed the ranches still, especially the uh, sleet wheat. The bristle berries are working pretty well. All of that really works from the uh, cool slush though. But I would say this is not bad. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. I just realized this. This is not having a way to exit. <laughs> Alright, so I gotta do this. And then I gotta do it like that. Did it before cycle 1000? That's true. We will have it done before cycle 1000. Whoa, overheated? Oh, this is starting to take hot water damage because the water is hot. Feels bad, man. Uh, let me deconstruct that and make that out of steel. There we go. We had one death in the colony, though. Shout out to Gorbash. I don't know if you hear Gorbash. I haven't seen you in a couple of streams, but you died, buddy. I hate to say this. Feels bad, man. We had an extra grave, uh, grave instead of uh, just having the one by itself, just in case. But we did have one death in this playthrough. This guy was the first uh successor of Cthulhu he was our databanks guy and you could see that Cthulhu did not train him well he's dead <laughs> I'm over here blaming Cthulhu for that he's he's dead man feels bad Cthulhu should have trained him better so we'll see on the next playthrough who the next databank guy is going to be Cthulhu is, uh, from what I heard, retired, and he does not want to do it anymore. But uh, hopefully we won't kill off the next databank researcher guy. Cthulhu, man, if you had to pick someone in chat, who do you want to be your successor? This is why Cthulhu is driving and Uglarvis is training me. <laughs> I was a damn hero this run. I saved lives. This is true. If you guys didn't know what Cthulhu was talking about, there was a guy by the name of Decoy. Is he still here? Or was it Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow? I think it was Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow. He kept killing people, man. He kept mining tiles they needed to climb out and then leaving immediately. And he left the people stranded. He would entomb people in tiles in their face. Cthulhu was right there every time for some reason. I remember that, man. Whoa, we're overheating again? What's overheating? Oh, now this is overheating? Come on, man. You gotta make me replace the generator, too. I will replace that with steel, man. Why not? Why not? Hopefully that's enough to keep this cool. Are you sure it wasn't a plan by Cthulhu to look like a hero? Ooh, that's a good point. 
He was in cahoots with Mr. Arrow Capital Fellow to sabotage people. Hey, Staff! Holy crap! That's someone I haven't seen in a long time. Staff, how are you doing? Sup? How are you? How was the Tuesdays? How was the weather where you're at, Staff? And what is good? How was you? How was the kitties? How was Mocha? How was Alex? How is... Jake? I believe those are the three names. And how was Coconut? How are the babies? How are the animals? And how are you, stuff? It's been warm and whatnot, like everywhere. Have you gone out, like hiking, doing the things like that? Have you been enjoying the weather? I have, there's some uh, Canadian folks in chat that have been telling me, man, dude, this is summertime. It's warm, go out to, you know, nature, see the nice areas, breathe in the good air. Have you done the summer festivities stuff? And of course, Steph, you're catching us on the end of the playthrough. We're about to beat the game right now. So if you've never seen the end game cutscene when you beat the game for the first time, we're going to do that right now. The last objective, the Great Escape. They're all good. And yes, I've been doing a little hiking. Oh, nice, nice. I hear that a lot of people have been doing that. Cool, cool. I'm assuming that uh, Alex's leg never got bad, right? After magically breaking his leg in the first month with you. And you have to go through all the shenanigans. He's okay now, right? Nothing's been uh, bothering him or anything. Touring around the U.S. for the few weeks. Uh, last month, this month. Oh, nice. How was it? Did you have a nice trip? Heading to Bangkok for a month, leaving on the first. Nah, his leg healed normally. Nice, nice. Damn. That's what? In a, in a week? I see you over there, Steph. Hope you have a nice trip. Building in two minutes? Oh, that's over there. That's fine. That's fine. We're just getting hit by meteor showers. Totally legit. Somehow my generators are still running. Yeah, I've been so busy. Haha. -ha. Yo, man. Sounds like it's been a good busy. So, yo, man. That's good. That's good. So, staff, you're going to be gone for months. I, I probably won't see you for that time span, huh? Because it's like, hmm. If you do go over there, time zone's going to change up your sleep schedule when you're going to be awake and all that, right? Or would it actually line up so that it's like, maybe it's at night or something. It's right before you go to bed and I go live. <laughs> I'm curious how that works out, man. You're going to live day by day. That's not bad. It's not bad. So if you're not going to do touristy stuff, what are you going to do? <laughs> are you just going to go? Th are you you're not bringing any of your pets, right? Oh, okay. Okay. In a month. So this is okay. Doing a year. I'm uh, moving in a year. And you're going to be living in a hotel for a month. Oh, crap. That's going to be expensive, yo. Have you already been to Thailand? So, so, it's not that you need to become familiar with it. It's, it's, I imagine just, uh, you're just going there to kind of like get into the vibe, right? Get into the groove. I have managed to get a guy with starry eyed and an interest in piloting. He's good with the rocketry. Oh man, dude. Dude, imagine you get starry eyed and loner. And he's, he's like your researcher pilot. That would have been amazing. Gets gets the mad mood buff constantly. Gets the attribute buffs too for no reason. Is it really that cheap? That's, that's impressive. But hey, hope it's a nice time. I If I were you, I'd be looking, for the, looking forward to the food, man. <laughs> I know I don't know enough about Thai food. The first thing I would order is Pad Thai. Feels bad, man. Do, do we have any people recommend, like, good food I should order that's not Pad Thai or Pad CU? From, uh, or, or Tom Kagal soup or something like that? Or curry? What's the actual good dish that's not the, 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 the staple go-tos? 
What? 470 Canadian a month? A month? Dude, that's like two days, dude. That's two days. In like, American hotels. Holy shit, that's cheaper than rent. And you're living at a hotel? Where they, you know, they kind of clean up after you and whatnot? That's kind of, that's kind of insane, dude. Yo, man, I gotta move to Thailand. <laughs> I gotta move to Thailand and be a streamer, dude. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Yeah, that's, 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 that's insane. Dude, cost of living in California is way too much, man. I'm really, I'm realizing that right now. How close to this checkbox you be? Oh, we're there, guys. It's time to beat the game. Dude, that's why I'm moving there. That makes a lot of sense. Guys, are you guys ready? It's time to get the W. Gonna start a traveling vlog YouTube channel too. Good luck, Steph. If you need any help, I would uh, attempt to point you in the right way. But I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, if you need like some freeware, like, you know, editing programs that, you know, you want to just mess around with to learn so that you could do your vlog stuff. I could help you out with that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, things to learn. Does that mean you're going to be traveling Asia? Or are you going to be like one of those guys that goes like, you know, you just walk around with a camera, traveling, trying food. You got to make a series about the night market. <laughs> First thing you got to do. Next thing you know, it's like you got to do, you got to make a series about all the exotic animals. <laughs> And then you got to do individual restaurants. Dude, there's a lot of YouTube channels like that. There's a guy that I watch that started off his YouTube channel going to all the Japanese vending machines. Have you guys seen that? Average salary Taiwan, $620 US. That's insane. Mighty Stooge, what's good? Perfect timing. Yep. It's time to beat the game. It's going to be time. But, uh, we, you know, we're gonna chat for a little bit. We're gonna ease into it. Just don't do a series about animals biting you. That's been done. <laughs> oh, man. I see what they're geek. Doesn't that, doesn't that go against the YouTube policy? You can't show yourself getting hurt or something like that? Or is that only a Twitch thing? I gotta Google that? Alright, I'll see you, Steph. I'll do it later after the stream. I saw a guy, though. He started off his YouTube channel by going to vending machines in japan he's japanese and he shows you like how the meals are from the vending machines because apparently there's like popular strips of just vending machines that people go to get lunch and so they'll have things like curry rice you know katsu uh you know the american stuff like uh hamburgers pizza and then they have like hot dogs there too ham sandwiches and then they'll have like other dishes too like the uh rice rolls and stuff it's pretty cool and then he's he i guess he did all the vetting machines he started to do restaurants so he would go to restaurants and talk about it how things work how the revolving sushi line works how some of the uh there's there's some cool places some some really cool like uh concepts one of them that i saw in japan was uh they the there's a revolving sushi platter line and it's all you can eat sushi you just go in pay a fee and then you just grab it from the line you could also order Every time you take something, it's on a plate, and all the plates are identical. There is a slot machine that uses the plates as a coin. And you could win, like, a small prize. Like, you know, travel size mouthwash, you know, if you want that. And it's it's, it's pretty cool. You got to play a little mini game, and then every dish you eat is kind of like a chance. And then you, you have a chance of winning a prize. And then that way, they get you to move all the dishes into one area for them to wash. So it's like, instead of paying a, a busboy for doing that, you could just do it that way instead. It's kind of cool. I thought it was a really cool concept. So you clean up after yourself, and then they just bust and clean up the table instead of moving the dishes. So it's a little bit faster. I might do a mix of international travel plus daily life as an, uh, ah, uh, I see you for content. Dude, go for it stuff. You know what to do. But, uh... 
Yo man, you gotta learn all the clickbaity stuff. How to make a thumbnail. <laughs> the, the things you need to look out for. A lot of that, I don't even know yet. I'm still a young YouTuber myself. Guys, it's time. Let's go though. It is time to breach a tear. And we're gonna see the end game cutscene. So, this is the tear. This is our rocket. This is the inside of the rocket. This Uglar Visk, somehow he's super productive. We have Geek and Cthulhu. And it's time. Let's go, boys. Enter the tear! We did it! The Great Escape! Oh, man, that place looks gross. That place got torn up, man. All of the asteroids, all the places that we have the mini pods on. Not bad, not bad. We got the tree hanging out. We got our water asteroids. We got the gassy moose. Let's go! Hey! Got the 07s, got the salutes. And we did it. Let's go, guys. We have always viewed the Neporal Terror as a phenomenon to fear, but like the civilizations before us, the call to adventure asks us to confront our anxiety and leap into the unknown. As a radical action of hope, I have sent enough duplicates through the Neporal Terror to start another colony, explore dimensions beyond ours, and plant the seeds of life throughout time and space. Guys, we did it! We beat the game! And with that, that is three out of three on the three main objectives, guys. Oh man.